Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for being part of 1455's fifth annual Story Fest. If you've been here with us throughout, and especially if you've checked out our offerings from previous years, uh, please accept my gratitude. And a reminder, every single session, as always, is being recorded. Uh, and all of our previous festivals, every session has been recorded, as well as our author series, our interview series, our movable type reading parties, uh, all kinds of content, hundreds and hundreds of hours of amazing footage featuring some of the best storytellers in the world. We cross post a lot of that on our site, and we also have it featured on our YouTube page. You can check all that out at 1455litarts.org. I'll have a few words to say to conclude today's final day of the festivities, but let's get right down to business on day two. We are so honored this year to feature the amazing artwork of John Todd. And if you've seen our marketing collateral, you've seen any of the uh, advertisements we've done on social media, you're already familiar with and have enjoyed some of his work. I am absolutely thrilled that our creative director, Morgan Ryan, is about to sit down and talk to John about his art, his process, the trajectory of his career, and the things that he's up to. Um, that discussion is coming up momentarily. And later today, to close things out, we will have our featured keynote speaker, the one and only Lou Byard, who's always a joy and a treat. So make sure to check that out. Uh, I hope you enjoy all of this. And again, you can find it all on our YouTube page and check out what we're up to throughout the year at 1455litarts.org. Thanks. Thank you so much, Sean. I'm Morgan Ryan with 1455, and I'm here with John Todd. John Todd is a graphic artist from Washington, D.C., who serves professionally as a graphic designer and also creates visual art, which we have featured in our recent issue of Movable Type. John's work uses bright colors, graphic elements, and photography to create digital collage. His work has been featured in our various promotions for StoryFest, as well as in the event header image on the website. Welcome, John. It's so awesome to have you here. Thank you, Morgan. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. It's awesome to finally have you on video and, and talk a little bit more in depth um, since you've been a returning feature in a couple of places for us over the last few months. Mm -hmm. So it's been yeah, great to be have this opportunity to, to have this conversation. So I'm ready. <laughs> so we're both graphic designers by trade. Yes. Um, and I know, you know, it's it's interesting for me. Um, but I want to ask you this question before I make too many assumptions. What is it like for you to work as a graphic designer? Oh, I feel like it changes from day to day. Uh, but for the most part, it's like a, a lot of variety, a lot of different um, problems to address visually because um, of different um, things that need to be communicated for different perspectives or different platforms or different intentions. Um, so there's always a, a bit of a um, trying to figure out the best ways to um, compart compartmentalize and focus on one thing, just to be able to address that particular, particular issue visually. And of course, we have different people we have to like um, communicate with and get their feedback as well. So it could be challenging at, at times to juggle like feedback and then um, focusing on the attention of the project, but Overall, it's like a um, um, a good mix of like different types of um, points of views <laughs> that come down to it. But yeah, it's it's definitely a fun job. But I agree with you. It's yeah, so much about absolutely. constantly being kind of asked a question that you have to answer visually, and sometimes mm -hmm. you get the option of including or working on the messaging as well. But right, it's so much like even. Um, even in flat design, you're kind of thinking user experience, you know, mm -hmm. it's so much about that and about like guiding kind of the path of the audience or the user and right. uh, it's a very objective job. Sometimes yeah. it feels that like design can sometimes to me feel like it's at like pole end of art, mm -hmm. you know, like the expressiveness of it, you know? Right. Because um, how someone, how someone, one person views 
the work, your work that you've done. So I'm totally different, have a totally different perspective. Cause like, especially cause now since a lot of the work that that I do is like digital heavy, that um, the user experience is like the end goal. So I'm always focusing on like, how will this person perceive and receive this message that I'm creating visually and keeping that in mind while also having to be creative at the same time. Yeah, so it winds up being so much more reduced than a lot of other art Mm -hmm. forms where you need to think about like what the most likely um, perception of what it is that you're creating is gonna be. Right. So you have to have a right. real understanding of that and a real measure mm-hmm. on you know, what people's immediate associations are going to be with, with anything that you represent. Mm-hmm. Right. So do you, um, well, I already know the answer to this, but <laughs> I know that you have explored creativity out of the productivity, you know, in your day job. Um, mm-hmm. And we figured some of that work. So mm-hmm. I was hoping maybe we could just take a look and we could talk a little bit about the features that you've had in movable type, um, as well as take a look at some of that collage that has then translated to the event site. Yeah, that sounds good. So I'm going to pull up, um, actually, I, you know, I, I want to pull up the original image that we used for the last movable type cover. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm going to share my screen. And so there we go. Can you see my screen? Yes. So this beautiful, vibrant orange and purple image was the cover image. It, immediately, Sean and I were so attracted to this um, because of just the color and the texture and the overlays. It's just so beautiful. Um, and I'm hoping maybe you can tell us a little bit about the inspiration behind this, which seems to be a series. Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, so this was it come from a series I started a couple of years ago, um, just as a with the intention of wanting to expand my creativity outside of the normal day to day of being a graphic designer and also to push my limits and do the type of work that I wasn't initially doing. Because as we mentioned earlier, like with graphic design, especially with like a, for an employer or a client, it was within, within certain parameters. So being able to just like break free of that gives me opportunity to really just test things out and just play around and have, have actually have fun <laughs> with it for the most part. Um, for me, inspiration, like color is a big major role in this. So it's why I have like the orange, like the, the vibrant purple on top of it. Cause I like contrast, I like bright colors and really Stand, they stand out to me. And of course, colors have a meaning as well um, to give a specific feeling. Um, and since art is very subject, subjective, that feeling can be different for different people. Um, I, and also I'm a big fan of like um, nature. So I'd like to, I incorporated, incorporated a lot of floral elements and on top of the fact that it has a lot of texture as well. So it, gives more of a um, different feel to the overall artwork as well. Um, and it just, it's, it's a good opportunity. It really was fun just to be able to create this and just um, play around with like layout and hierarchy and placement, just, just see where things go and end up landing on this. I, I love it so much. And I agree with you. I think it's fun just to be attracted and inspired by color or your connection to color. And it is so subjective. Um, when I see this, I see this orange, orange to me right now, I have this association that it's so like live, it's so alive, like it's an energetic mm-hmm. color. Um, one of the colors that I've been so attracted to recently, ironically, is is pink because mm-hmm. I had a past association with it that it was a very feminine color. And it's like a mm-hmm. color that's very reserved for like being a princess kind of growing up. I was always resisting. Mm-hmm pink like pink's not my favorite color you know uh-huh. I, I choose red I choose some other color I'm I'm not limited to pink because I'm a girl like I remember even noticing oh, right. and having that association to pink and in the past um few months I've just kind of become very attracted to the color because I feel mm-hmm. like with you know changing times that color no longer feels like it's a princess color and my association to it has changed and now I see it as this like modern, very genderless color actually. And I, mm-hmm. I love that and it feels very fresh. Right. 
So just with different like tones and shades of pink, you really can do a lot with that in different applications. So yeah. it doesn't have to be assigned to like feminine energy only. Yeah. Different intentions. Yeah. So let's jump over and actually take a look at uh, some of the other work that looks uh, similar to this in series that's on the um, StoryFest site. I got to jump here really quick, share a different screen. For everyone attending this event, um, they would have seen this artwork already when they registered. Um, but what we did here is actually a mashup of three different pieces from John. So there were three different different individual um, graphic collages that are overlaid and their original colors were different um, to function as a backdrop. This is kind of, we're talking about like the art side versus the functionality side. And this is something that's like at play here where we're taking this art that was created as art and making it function as a backdrop. And then, you know, we kind of, I think have chatted about this. I don't know if it was earlier uh, on this mm -hmm. call or, yeah. or before that, but talking about just how it needs to be reduced a little bit, you know, like mm -hmm. you, you have to kind of like dial things back sometimes. Um, so I feel like we're kind of showing only a glimpse of what these original pieces were, but they're so beautiful as this mixed collage as well. So we can call this one a little bit more of a collaboration, I guess. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I like the way it turned out. It turned out good to me. It's like a preview of what it could be. Yeah. And it, it was like, it's cohesive as well. But when you look at it, look at them individually, you see they have different um, messages and um, visual elements. So I, I noticed that um, in both the example at, uh, that we just looked at from movable type, as well as this one, there's a lot of focus on um, the features being called out, but in this way where the face as like to be identified is very much anonymous, like things are covered mm -hmm. up. You can't really recognize the individual, but mm -hmm. their mouths are, are there, like their, their mouths are present. And to me, that's saying mm -hmm. something like it, it, it's curious to me. And I, I find this um, desire to try to like understand, you know, what this person isn't seeing, but what they're saying, for example, in the, in the lower left, I'm sorry, um, mm -hmm. lower right. Um, mm -hmm. He's blind, but he's able to speak. I guess aren't mm -hmm. we all? <laughs> yeah. So as you see, I, there was, I feel like I was maybe subconsciously doing, making these decisions about like making them, um, making their features not being able to be seen because I wanted the focus to be on the overall work versus their faces and who this person is and get, having that pure person focus so much on who this person is and their backstory and all, the, other, all those other elements. So I'll focus on covering their line of sight out. And a part of me, now that we talk about it, was probably also thinking at the time when I was making these pieces of um, showing parts of myself um, through these pieces that um, I want that I don't see within myself. Because I, I feel like sometimes in my work, I'm more so a visual person than like a, a vocal person. So I'm more so like, it's hard. it can be hard, actually harder for me to speak on what I'm say saying. So it's easier for me to show. So it's like, I want to be able to like, um, focus less on the identity and focus more so on the attention behind the message with the different visual elements. Some of the visuals to speak for me because it can be hard for me to get my message out <laughs> with yeah. words. And as an artist, it just feel like it's easy just to like show things from an artistic and creative point of view. And I think I was trying to do this, trying to do the exact same thing with these pieces as well um, to show like the um, bring to maybe give people different memories of like what's going to see a certain florals or how things are, how like the pieces are coming together and where they're placed and um, give them some sort of visual in interest in making people feel a certain way when they view these pieces versus and hopefully seeing themselves as well since you can't see the person is and you can't receive the person's identity, maybe they see themselves as well in, in these pieces. 
has like, this organic element that's mm -hmm. like kind of coexisting among these layered florals. Mm -hmm. They're also Absolutely. very glamorous. For, in particular, <laughs> um, the one on the left with her big earrings and lipstick. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. And I, I agree with you. I think sometimes yeah. it's like when you're creating something, you're thinking about composition and it the decisions mm -hmm. that you make wind up being what just feels right once you place it in a certain area. You're just focused on harmony and balance and mixing in these elements that you, you want to, um, but mm -hmm. you're not like, there's not necessarily such deep intent with like the specific placement of a petal as much as it feels right there <laughs> you know right. like exactly yeah it, and I I, <laughs> I find that really challenging actually um when, mm. when people have asked me to speak about my work as well as like well it's just it's this organic creative process and I don't even necessarily mm. know you know, if I'm creating art myself, like, I don't even necessarily know what the end product is going to be as, as right. much as I would like it to match the original creative spark. Sometimes it has to kind of evolve from there as you're in, in the mm -hmm. process of it. Right. Yeah, I get and it. And as things change and as things change, like when you're first starting a piece, like what your original idea for it was can change as you're making it. And then it's like, well, I thought I wanted to be here, but actually it'll look better here. What if I blew this up? What if I change the scale, the the direction, like those little details, you just play around with it. And it, it's, um, it kind of takes the pressure off from um, having, sticking with having to look a certain way. Yeah, there's there's you freedom. Make, yeah, you know, end up with a whole new piece that you probably didn't have, really have in mind. It, it pretty much, you're creating something new in a process. Do you find that that's different from like when you're creating a collage piece like like one of these works mm. do you find that it shifts your mind into a different place than when you're doing something say that's like digital advertising <laughs> oh yeah it's totally different mindset because i feel like i have so many for like for digital advertising or any graphic work most of it is at different um parameters have yeah. the person's opinions or what they want in mind that the whole creative brief they have to follow and right. has to stick within a certain area <laughs> but with yeah. this is like I can do whatever I want to it's like so much freedom it's like I don't have to worry about the only person I have the answers to only person I have the answer to is me yeah and like and my original idea I can stick with that I can change it I, I there's no um no certain guidelines have to stick within when creating like these collages is just as you said the word the best word like just organic and freedom yeah versus um having to perfectly follow brand standards yeah right? you know like per perfectionism i think is something that's mm -hmm. driven into us um i think yes. it, at least it, it was for me early in my career you know um learning how to yeah follow a creative brief but also you know deliver something that's as perfect as possible to match those parameters can yeah. feel like an uncreative process at times um mm -hmm. it can also be fun to work on a variety of different projects and I really love yeah. doing graphic design but it is a different pursuit when you get to actually go in and create some art and it's pretty awesome when you get to use the skill set and medium that you're so well versed in right right but I see some other mediums behind you there um <laughs> <laughs> yeah so getting into like, painting um, a little bit I am let me pull some down so this is like a totally new um medium that really getting into hope you can see I'll, I'll hide my face so <laughs> we can see most of these um, very similar is right to like a lot of graphic elements, very bold, very vibrant. Um, that's just something like I feel like that's like a theme with me and my work. It, it, like the colors like tell a tell a story. Um and the whole of course the whole attention was like there was no uh certain way I wanted to come out. I sketched it briefly on a sketch pad and then just did a brief drawing as like an outline and then went from there. Um 
and create something like fun that I didn't have to worry about creating on the computer because I needed to get my eyes a break because you work on the computer for so long every single day. Yeah. And it can be a, a challenge to really push the creativity when you're looking at things on a screen so all the time. The color in that one and the clean lines and shapes remind me mm -hmm. so much of the graphic series that's on your Instagram. So mm -hmm. I can tell very much that your style has translated across mediums. Um, you know, it's, yeah. it's very graphic inspired, I feel like. Yeah, I think I just, I can't escape it like naturally. It's just a part of me who I am. I've always been drawn to like, especially like shapes, organic, like organic shapes and geometric shapes and um, having fun with that because there's so much different things you can do with it. And yeah. it makes it, makes it, I just feel like every piece can be different. I can create like the exact same thing multiple times, but it's, there's a difference between each each piece. Yeah. You didn't get to talk mm -hmm. about that other one that's a little bit darker. Do you want to pull that one forward? Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I know it's fine. So this one, like, again, like geometric shapes. Um, yeah, similar color schemes. Um, but I just um, do something different. I did like a darker contrast. And then it's like the brighter colors using like some masking tape and then um, um, for some reason I'm thinking about flames. I think that's part of the reason why there's some similar colors. It might be because I'm a fire sign as an Aries. Maybe I'm just drawing fire. <laughs> but, I do um, see the, the fiery colors like moving mm -hmm. through a lot of your work. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like peeling back the layers of like you know, like what's behind the darkness is like the fire with, within. Um, so that's like a good way I can like describe this and it's like feels fun and it's like naturally like peeling back the layers to like what's really within. the fire within uh, slightly peeking through <laughs> right something like that I like that um so again I just let organically organically just placing things and like seeing what makes sense not allow myself to get so caught up in like the it has to be perfect it has to look a certain way otherwise it's a failure I'm just more so just let 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 go and like be free and let things happen and create a story based on how you're feeling at that time yeah I I always feel like paint is a more intimidating medium and maybe that's just because I'm used to working with you know graphic design software but like with doing design work it's like you can just be so experimental so mm. easily and then undo it or redo it or mm. move things around and it's so fast comparatively mm -hmm. to putting together a painting where you're like, I think the, the, on the, the painting can be a little bit more um, of a longer term meditative process, I would assume, um, mm -hmm. where you are doing some pre-planning, but like that whole background layer, you have put every brushstroke on that versus like working mm -hmm. with a gradient, you know, in, in Photoshop, you know, mm -hmm. so, so much more connected to like, every little section of that that's slowly been put right. together to create this composition which i think yeah, is it makes, itself. yeah it makes you appreciate the process creative process a lot more as a doing paintings because as you said it was it was digitally easy just like erase it and then like start over um but with paintings it's like it's just permanent i mean you can fix certain things but like it once it's on there it's on there you, there's no swiping and like control all delete it's like it's, it's there yeah and you yeah. have to like pretty much work within yeah if you make that once you make that brush stroke you have to work with that or find a way to make it a part of the painting or just keep it moving so it forces you to keep moving along and not having to rethink and re-edit all the time so has working on the paintings influenced your design work at all like ha have you found inspiration from shifting gears and painting and going through the painting process that then mm -hmm. translates back to graphic design yeah a bit um i sometimes i like to experiment with like the different like abstract shapes different ways to create different um, um striking visuals and see how i can incorporate that into like my graphic work because there are different ways, you know, for example, you might have to stick with certain guidelines for different like graphic materials, but there are opportunities to create, add, add in some type of creative freedom into it, create a part of like myself into it. Um, um, even if it's very subtle, but like, for example, like the color schemes or um, using certain shape elements, um, graphic elements, um, and as an accent, 
um, that's a good way to like pretty much like experiment and try different things and it helps to um, see what works and um, how it can apply it to different materials or to keep that in mind for future projects as well because sometimes if there isn't an active project I'm working on that I could use like use this for but um, keen to like play around like experiment can help be helpful for the future. Yeah, I find myself thinking that way too. It's like, what can I use this for? If I ever create mm -hmm. something just for 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 fun and expression, I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. but how can I use this later? And it's somehow giving me permission to like have created it in the first place because I feel mm -hmm. like I've been trained, you know, over so long to be so objective with my work. Um, yeah. So it's funny just to hear you say that too. I, I my brain works the same way. Um, so. I got, I have another question for you. So where do, and I don't think we've, we've gone into this yet. Um, but where do you find your inspiration? Oh, my God, I feel like it's all over the place. Like <laughs> I can, um, I find it in like music and lyrics. Um, when it was lyrics, you have to like paint a picture of like what the person is thinking about. Um, and trying to paint the picture, especially if you don't, there's not even a music video attached to it. Like you, yeah. you're creating a whole vision um, with the song. Um, I have like things from things I see on the street. I can see like um, the way the, um, one thing that really draws me, like especially at nighttime, it's like a full moon and especially like the very um, like subtle amount of sky surrounding it, or, like the bright stars, you kind of like see like how a vision within itself. And that's actually one of the inspirations for one of my painting, not my paintings, but my digital graphics. Um, I think it's called Boy in Blue. Um, it's one with like the, um, he has like a, a do-rag on, it's like his um, back is exposed within the water. And then you have like um, someone like rising above, like the, like the internalized inner child rising above within him. So that's like seen from like, the vision that I see outside, like the the moonlight, I've always been drawn to the moonlight on top of uh, the sun as well. Um, just looking around, I, sometimes I see them on accident, sometimes it's not unintentional, sometimes just like walking around. That's why it's important for me to like get outside, get off the computer and like to be outside and like live and, and do stuff. <laughs> Cause that's what you can like see. So you can see here or conversations that you hear or people watching or, um, just yeah. doing day-to-day -day things is like where I get most in my, most of my best organic inspiration for different projects versus force myself to look up to find inspiration because it leads you to that doesn't work out for me. I can find things I thought would be really cool. It's like I want to do something like that and, and like do my own thing. But for the most part, most of it just comes from just being out in the world. Yeah, I agree with you. It is it is equally as just um, kind of random for me as well. Um, mm -hmm. I'll just come across something that I couldn't have necessarily even searched for. That all of the sudden, mm -hmm. all of a sudden, is sparking this just mindset of in, being right. inspired. And once mm -hmm. that gets turned on, it's just I'm I'm looking for inspiration everywhere, and then I'll find it right. because right. I've switched something. You know, and and you mentioned mm -hmm. like you know, moonlight for me, I, I you know, I, I love the moonlight too, but I also love that golden hour right before the sun sets as well. Oh yeah. Everything becomes so warm and soft mm -hmm. and beautiful. Mm -hmm. So I just like looking at the world outside at that time is just inspiring to me. Um, mm -hmm. As well as, you know, talking about different light Shit, like the metaphor of that right like the mm -hmm. light changing and shining on things differently all of a sudden providing this different this new perspective for you mm -hmm. to observe like a fire flickering and seeing that light on on someone's face right. all of a sudden you like see this you kind of are seeing them differently the mood has changed mm -hmm. so gives you like it gives you a totally different new vibe when based on like the yeah. lighting and where it's placed and is people a person position it's like it's it'd be really interesting you can tell a, like a give you inspiration you can tell a story within itself just by watching um the world do its thing <laughs> yeah and i mean thinking about um light and and how that changes the picture that's being created that's that's such a photog photography focus which i know you've mm -hmm. 
uh, totally incorporated. Um, much of that mm -hmm. is on your Instagram account as well. Um, yes. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, actually started off, um, it's funny, I call myself like a self-portrait self, -port a self photographer, <laughs> mainly because I take more pictures of myself than other people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not to sound vain, but it's mostly like, I find myself to be like um, my own best subject. Always Again, available. Bet, always, always. Uh... Exactly. I don't have to hire <laughs> nobody. I can just like, hey, I'm here. I'm available. <laughs> I can just do myself up and make something happen. Um, um, I don't have to answer anybody. And I can just create, if I create my own piece of the work. And I also see it as a form of a visual diary, because as I mentioned earlier about um, the way that I feel I'm not always able to um, articulate, articulate through words. So I say it through pictures. Yeah. Um, so I, it's the best way for me to communicate the way that I feel without getting too deep in words um, or trying to find the right words that don't feel natural to me. What I can do is literally just show that through body language yeah. or poses and color. Um, you get to become, I mean, I, I don't think it's vain actually at all. I think um, it can be really beautiful and amazing to have the amount of control as the photographer as well as mm -hmm. like the form you know mm -hmm. like you get to completely control the form if you're doing a self-portrait right um so there's just so much I think that can be done with that and so much that you can experiment with mm -hmm. you know um so yeah I I think in a world of uh more uh you know can candid kind of unartistic snapshot selfies it's refreshing to yeah. think about like self-portrait you know yeah like, there's as, an intention as, behind as art. intentional yeah right now i find myself drawn to a lot of the a lot of those type of um photographers or artists um that inspire me um as i was growing up um because a lot of photographers that i do like are self-portrait photographers um, um especially their earlier work because like again probably because it was cheaper to hire themselves versus trying to find a model and do all this stuff when they're like doing new stuff and trying to figure out their craft um and just being able to just like use yourself as your own subject and to get the message across and hoping people relate to it um, and I actually like the fact that it seems to be a common thing now a lot of people are using self-portraiture as like a creative outlet even if they don't consider kind of themselves to be artists or photographers, but like we're all creatives to a certain, we're all creatives in different ways. So, I mean, technology has obviously changed so much over the past decade and, you know, with oh. social media and just like accessibility to, to apps and things where like anyone can mm -hmm. really just play with design tools. I actually mm -hmm. think it's inspiring uh, in its own, like, I feel like we all kind of have to adapt to this changing technology. I don't necessarily mm -hmm. feel threatened by it, although who knows, AI may take our jobs one day. <laughs> um, but oh, AI. I think we'll then just have to find ourselves in other creative mediums, which, you know, I think creative mm -hmm. souls do anyway. Mm -hmm. Right. But I mean, yeah. I, yeah. I mentioned AI. <laughs> I have a love-hate relationship with AI. It's so scary and so sketchy. And a part of me as an artist is like, when you see these pieces that are created, like this AI, and they're what you've read about the fact that they're taking it from other people throughout the world, like these images are taken all around and create one piece. And part of me feels like, that doesn't feel right as an artist. So I'm not sure how to really feel about that. I haven't really thought about it from a perspective of like, by our roles and our jobs like yes they can cry, create a logo or or a quick graphic image but there's a specific human element that's necessary for especially a role of graphic designer could you need yeah. a human element to really communicate and connect with the person and to create the right type of visual and that's hard it's gonna be hard to do that with a machine yeah. for, to my in, my in my opinion um I actually do appreciate the way that technology has advanced because it has created more opportunities for people to create, especially for me as an artist. I have more, more tools to utilize and there's so many more resources to use to um, teach myself something new, uh, yeah. to expand my skill sets. And I think um, the way that um, 
technology has the team to advance. It provides more opportunities to grow um, as an artist and as a creative. And I'm hoping there'll be more of it that's less invasive like AI, but we'll see. <laughs> I mean, I, I've seen things become easier and faster. And yes. for me, I, I, you know, that obviously makes um, me able to produce more, um, mm -hmm. me able to do bigger and better projects. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, it's also kind of intimidating because a lot of the skills that, you know, you, you may have, have learned early in your career or went to school and learned, all of a sudden feel like they're like slowly becoming irrelevant because the mm -hmm. tools all of a sudden know how to do all of these like basic things. Like they know how to filter an image, say, mm -hmm. it, I'll use the selfie example. Um, not that this is a particularly creative pursuit, but like retouching mm -hmm. a portrait. Yeah. That's like just a quick filter now. There's no need for yeah. someone to artfully uh, retouch a portrait beautifully. You know, um, it's so yeah. fast. Convenience. Yeah. And I, I've but, used those, <laughs> I used to use apps like that before when, in the earlier days. I do actually do appreciate the effort of going in and like retouching certain things. But it's so much, so much easier and faster and more convenient to just be like, here's a filter and then go on with it. Um, despite like what negative connotation that can have on someone in uh, self-esteem. <laughs> like at the, at the while, I remember reading something about how um, people like start to like feel self-conscious about the fact like, especially when you use filters that so often and start thinking about themselves a certain way. So, uh, I don't know how I feel about that, that I'm now so conditioned <laughs> with these filters um yeah. I went on the tangent about that um, oh, but, no. uh, <laughs> something that that I've had a lot of experience with too uh and people are there's a lot of different opinions and reactions to it um yeah. I don't know it, you know if when you've done photography if you've ever had um someone specifically ask you to remove something they're self-conscious about and that becomes yeah. kind of uncomfortable um yeah like they want you to shave a certain amount of weight off, like whatever it is that, oh that they specifically <laughs> in this picture. And it, yeah, yeah. It, it, it makes me kind of sad sometimes. Um, yeah. You know, versus, you versus finding the beautiful moonlight on that person, you know? Because mm -hmm. you want them, you take the picture as they are in that, in that moment, and then for them to want to can you turn me into someone else? <laughs> like, yeah, but I want to enhance. <laughs> yeah. But isn't that the, the difference between like a beautiful portrait and mm -hmm. a headshot, you know? Right. <laughs> like you want to create like a natural organic portrait, not like a magazine cover. Um, it's like <laughs> you want to take a picture of you. If I yeah. do all this stuff to your picture, is it really you? Or is this who you want to be? Yeah. Uh, oh, the far furthest I've ever gone was probably done blemishes. That's just common stuff because I feel like I'm a, I've always been okay with like doing that because you can naturally most of the time get rid of that over yeah. time versus when we turn you to someone else and with all these adjustments. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, John, I feel like we totally talked through graphic design and so many other creative mediums. Um, so as our features, featured artist this year, I feel like that was so appropriate. Um, I don't know if you prefer visual artist. Um, someone had given me the advice to, to change my title to that before um, because mm -hmm. it was more all encompassing, but it mm -hmm. seems like that would be a great title for you actually is visual artist, not necessarily just graphic. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I kind of go by both. Um, I call myself a graphic designer, but visual artist makes the most sense because it encompasses like a variety of the um, mediums that I like to use to express myself creatively versus like graphic artists, like that, that's it. <laughs> you really, that is, people think of one thing. Yeah. Visual could be so many different things. And I feel like if like, if you were to um, change just use the visual artist and it can make it feel like you have more, um, you're more well-rounded yeah. from a title point of view. Um, like we know how we are as creative, like how we identify and ways you want to express ourselves. Um, right. Um, but for example, like for example, like I do, like I'm not just on a painter or a graphic artist. I do like photography and gardening as well. So like it's a form of art. 
yeah. um, a different way to express yourself visually. Yeah. It says so much more about how you think and how you are mm -hmm. um, than the job, right? Because we're more than the right. job. Right, exactly, yeah. Well, John, thank you so much. Um, it's been so thank amazing you. talking to you and it's been great to actually get you on video and <laughs> be able to be on it with you even um, since we go way back. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it was so good to be back and um, be here. Um, this is a great conversation. So I'm glad to be able to talk and talk all things art in general and creativity and just be able to talk through my work because it also, but it also helps me to really think of different ways of how I think of my own work and how it can be connect with other people as well. So it's always good to be able to have a conversation about pieces and um, the way they can like, make people feel and the way they impact me as an artist as well. So this is awesome. Yeah. This has been really great. Awesome. Well, we'll have to do it again sometime. <laughs> of course. I'll be here. I'll be around. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you everyone for watching. Um, I hope you enjoy the rest of 1455 Story Fest. Uh, you can navigate back to the attendee hub and check out all of the rest of the sessions for the rest of the day. And um, everything will be available after the event on YouTube as well. So enjoy. We'll see everyone soon, hopefully.